All right, everyone. Welcome back. Well, to Veracity Trigger. This is my channel here, and uh, I play a lot of Brigandine, The Legend of Renarzia, as you can see up here and over here with the original game of Grand Edition or Legend of Forcina and Legend of Renarzia right here. So I want to go over some possible patch updates that could happen in the future and developers and producers of the new game. I hope that you're watching this and I'm going to try to explain this as well as I can, but I hope that you can implement all of these things that I'm going to cover here because these are things that only that I have thought of as far as like what could help the game and what could help the game grow uh, a little bit bigger and a little bit better. And as far as things that um, fans have wanted for a very long time and uh, with the new game, it's really awesome. Thank you very much for bringing it out. I just have to also include that there are some things that we would like to see in here that we would feel would help make the game just a little bit better. Most of these patch notes are really just kind of improvements. A couple of them are possibilities of changing something overall but I'm gonna go ahead and start up here I've got a little uh, ticker running down on the bottom there so you can kind of see most of my notes here but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the first thing is location 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 uh, the original game did this very well especially Grand Edition 2 as you can see here if I go ahead and click Grand Edition here on this side here I want to move Kai to Salisbury right but uh, Kai is at Hervery, so I want to go ahead and move him up, him and Marriott up to Salisbury up here, where where Dinadan and Biarte are. So that's bit, that's essentially what I want to do with this game, right? So the reason I'm talking about this, I go to check location. It says Kai's moving to Salisbury, right? Kai moves to Salisbury. Now it just shows this as a listing as to who will be at Salisbury, right? Um, whoever is at Salisbury right now or has moved to Salisbury will have a leader written in white on the top there. If they have moved there and they can't attack, the leader will be written in gray. And uh, that's kind of how that goes. Um, I don't know if I can show you an example here. But essentially, as soon as you go into attack phase, you'll know who's moved and who is ready to attack based upon whether the leader is written in white or gray. And so if we click over... To here or if we you know play the the new game here and I'm gonna go look and see who's who's doing what you see all these arrows going this way and that way okay sometimes this gets really confusing because you got like all these arrows just going all over the place and it gets to it's like oh let me double check to see where I've went and I have to check every single location individually now if I go and I press um, if I press Y on the butt on the controller here and I press R1 to go over here, it says status standby. Mua has moved, but his current base is Angrian. So this is the thing that um, fans have wanted to have happen. His current base is Angrian right here. That's his current base. I'm going to go back on the Grand Edition and show you the difference and the reason why this is very important. And I feel it's very important to update and fix and change this um, Kai has moved to Salisbury here so if I go ahead and uh, circle this here Kai has moved to Salisbury so this is kind of the difference here um, yes you've moved but you are still at this base where where is anger where is Mua going that's my question Where's Mua going? Now I know that I, I sent out the thing, but there's a lot of times I'm moving a ton of knights around because sometimes a, a better team could be over here or over there, and then I'm moving them all over the place and I have to check individually. On the right here with Grand Edition, this is fantastic because I know exactly they're moving to Salisbury. I don't care where they came from. I all I care about is where they're going so if you could please update this and change this uh, as far as the game goes as far as like movement tubes you know as far as moving to a new base that's all I want to see I know that they're moved and they came from Angrian but where are they going I don't know where they're going um, if I'm going to check this location this location uh, thing for me 
personally to spread out and send out a wave of attacks. It's super confusing and I have to check each and every individual castle again. Let's say I put the controller down because I, I did a couple things. I Maybe I saved it, maybe I didn't. I put the controller down, I had to do something else. I come back, I'm trying to remember where I put what. And I look at this screen here on the left, I have absolutely no idea what I did. <laughs> maybe I do to some degree, but I'm sure a lot of players out there are going to agree with this, that the old system as far as movement goes and location and checking on location was far simpler and far easier than this one here. This is a lot to look at and I don't know where I've gone. I, I know there's arrows pointing to it. I know I can go, like I can back out and I can look in the, uh, you know, I can look in the screen here. Let me erase this here real fast, but I can look on here and it and it shows me like, um, you know, moving over there, who's moving. Oh, this is attack phase anyways, but you, you know what I'm saying. It's like the movement whole thing as far as like, who's moved where it can it it's really confusing in the new game and it's very simple in the old game i would like it to go back to this or at least let your location say where they're moving to instead of their current base that's not important current base is, is literally one of the least of most people's concerns okay number two we're going to go to number two i'm going to pause it and we'll get right to number two okay point number two we're going to go over point number two. Hit point bars disappear with Y press, but not squad bubble. So you see the little squad bubbles here? I'm just going to go ahead and uh, show you this real fast. But I do want to um, say this here. Like there's the, uh, the movement, the unit number. So the squad bubble and the unit number are basically the same thing as far as both games are concerned. So... We're gonna go ahead and change this to large so you can just kind of see what I'm talking about. But in the old Brigandine game, you could put large and large would make it flash. If you do normal, they don't flash. But um, the unit number in a squad um, alphabetized number, I, I don't know what it's called here, but um, the squad number, so if I have to go and circle this, just so you know what I'm saying here, um, these bubbles here, all of these bubbles that are flashing, uh, they don't turn off in the original game. At least I don't think there is a way to turn them off in the original game. They can't. You could just make them normal sized or you could do this. A lot of people don't know about this because they haven't really tried it. But um, in this game, you've got these uh, unit um, alpha, beta, charlie, signifiers and I hope I'm trying to remember the right terminology for it but I'm it's <laughs> I, I might be forgetting at the point but um, in the original game you can go ahead and uh, click to make them blow up and, and do that sort of thing here I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off so it's not so annoying if it is annoying I don't know if it's annoying but um, we go back to normal. Large just makes them flash, really. But if we do this, you're gonna see that um, I mean, it, it still makes them flash, but they flash not so big like they were. Um, but here's the key difference here. If we're looking at uh, the new game here, I'm gonna press the Y button and I'm gonna turn off the bubbles. But the hit points turn off too. Now what I'm proposing is, and developers, please listen to me on this one. I think this is a great idea. You press it once, the hit points disappear, but the bubbles stay. So the, the little bubble with the B, as far as the marker, the, the army marker is concerned with, that will stay, but the hit points will go. The reason I'm saying this is because, um, at least for me, from a visual perspective, the hit point bars, they get in the way of actually seeing the monster. Typically, if I want to know what hit points the monster has or the person has, I will just hover over that. I don't even have. I I don't really care if they have a hit point bar. Actually, I prefer if they didn't. So, if could you add in an option to press this once to turn off the hit points, but leave the squad bubbles? 
because over here the squad bubbles stay no matter what whether you want them big or small i like that they're there but it also lets me see the full body of the monster or the knight which looks really cool um that's what i'm saying you press it once turns off the hit points but leaves the but leaves the bubbles there i i don't mind if you you know um turn off the hit points but i love to see the bubbles because i want to know what monster is on which team because a lot of the times as far as strategy goes that's a big deal okay so i hope that you implement that on the next patch 1.1.6 1 um the other thing that uh i wanted to talk about as well is number three hp bar could be the length of the hit points so those hp bars there that are drawn here that you drew as far as like each color and all that each of these hit point bars they could be directly the the size of the hit points that the enemy or knight or ally monster has so let's say that um you got a monster over here that has very little hit points its hit point bar would be like this let's say you've got a monster that has like really high hit points um Let's say this ghoul had a lot of high hit points. His hit point bar would be like here. So I think that the hit point bars should kind of reflect how much hit points they have instead of showing it like getting cut off because some knights and some monsters have like 600, 700, 900 hit points and you take off like a couple hit points and it doesn't, the scaling factor for the hit points seems a little strange to me. I would just prefer like if you got 100 hit points, you'd have a tiny little bar that just would be equivalent to 100 hit points. If you had 500 hit points, then your bar would be like this. So just from a standpoint perspective of just looking straight at it, you're like, wow, that guy's got a lot of hit points because a bar is jacked all the way to the side of the screen. <laughs> I think that would be cool if that was an implementation. Uh, take that into consideration. I think that's a great idea. I think fans might actually enjoy that. But also, I would like it that if you could turn off the hit points, leave on the squad bubbles. So these little glowing bubbles of B, please leave that on if you can turn off the hit points because I need to see that in order to do battles. I really do. There's times I turn it off just to get like in a... Uh, an effect of like, ooh, this looks really cool without all the, you know, stuff there. I can actually see them, you know, do their special attacks and all that. It looks cool that way. But I need to have those those glowing bubbles there so I can know which team is what. Okay, so that was number three. Uh, we're going on to number four. It'll be knights and creatures should glow green, blue, or yellow based on the spell color. So whatever the spell color affiliation is, let's say flight is a blue spell that should be uh you should glow blue if you have magic ward on you you should glow blue if you have protect you should glow green if you got halo you should glow yellow i'm going to show you that real quick here um if we go ahead and show it on the original grand edition here i'm going to go ahead and do this so i'm going to do a ward this is magic resist in grand edition same thing that's in here in Legend of Renares, yeah, we're gonna do a ward spell. We're gonna put a. This is a, essentially a blue spell. This protects against. Um, protects against. Uh, resist magic for a while, so it gives you a little magic. A um, uh, little magic defense there. So I'm gonna put ward on the scorpion, so it's probably easy to see. I hope my audio is not too loud. I'm working with a new. Uh, camera and mic. So you can see the scorpion has this like slight blue glow to it every once in a while. Now I know he has a ward spell, right? All right, we're gonna, so he has a ward spell. We're gonna do protect, or in this game it's called harden. It says toughen the skin, raise defense for a while. Same thing that happens in this game. We're gonna put a harden spell, a uh, green spell on, uh, let's put it on Ophelia here so you can kind of see that. We're putting it a green spell on her she's mostly like kind of whitish blue but you can see she's starting to glow green there so she has harden on so she's glowing like a green color she's got the harden or the protect spell on her um, and so she's got that so she glows green because she's got a, a protect spell and this glows blue because it's got a magic ward spell now um, let me move on here it's going to end this, and we'll look at Halo 
real fast here once they get done with their turns. All right, so now we have Halo, which should glow yellow. So your guys will start to glow like a yellow color. Um, we'll put that on, we'll put that here. So Halo guarantees a hit. It's 150% experience. So you can see he's glowing like yellow. So he looks kind of goldish now, but um, that's Halo. He's got a, a, he can definitely hit the, hit the monsters and all that. Um, if we look at what it says here, you know, next action will hit and earn 150% experience points. Okay, so that's great for the original. For this one, if you put any kind of protection buff, whether it's ward or protect, you glow green. And the reason I'm saying I'd like to see it how it is in the original, um, because this is easy to see. This is easy to know. I can just look from a, a perspective there and be like, that one's got Halo, that one's got Ward, you know, that one's got Protect. I can just look and see and know and say it. Um, but if we look in here and we look at some spells, I don't know if I have all the spells here, but if I put like, if I put like uh, Excel, Let's put it on something that would be kind of easy to see. I don't, everything's green in here. <laughs> uh, let's put Excel on his dragon here. Okay, Excel was kind of a red spell in the original game, but now he's glowing green. So he can move. Plus this little icon is here for everything. This icon denotes magic resist, protect, Excel, a lot of things. If I, if, if I put all these different spells on, I have to check individually each and every single monster to know what this is. This, this right here, this is a good idea if this was the particular color that it was. So if you have a ward spell, this should be blue. If you have a protect spell, this should be green. If you got a halo spell, maybe this should be yellow. Um, maybe Excel shouldn't be this particularly because now I have to go and press now I got to press triangle and and look at what it says here oh mobility up that's what it's about okay so I'm just saying from a visual perspective it would be good if we went back to this system here where we had the three different colors or more maybe more than the, those many colors but you glow the the color of the element of the protection spell that that you would be so if it's magic resist you glow blue like the scorpion if you're protected you glow green like ophelia the cleric and if you're haloed you'll glow yellow like the giant this is the proposal i have for you developers i hope that you can listen to that a lot of fans want that too i have talked to a lot of people and it seems like that is one of those things that would kind of help out but um Please take that in consideration for the next patch. Uh, I do truly like the game a lot. I just think that there's some visual and other things that could be helpful as far as um, making the game a little bit easier for sight and playability. All right, so number five, let's move on to number five. Flight spells should show a hovering character, should show a bobbing hovering character. So uh, I don't think I have any flight spells on this team here. Nope, she's just got Halo. She's got... Just has Ward. Ward was changed from uh, Fog previously. So there's no there's no flight here I can show you uh, for the game. But in the original game, you'll do a little hover motion. Where you'll just kind of bob up and down. You'll look like you're flying a little bit. Um, so I think we have a flight here. I have to look. Yes, we do have a flight here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, end this turn here. I don't think the Nightmare has flight. No, I don't think it does. So, I, I'm sorry. I'll, we'll get to the turn real fast. It's on fast, so... Uh, right. 
So like I was saying before, you he's got the heals, he's got a skill. This iron ore is essentially protect, just very cheap. So if I put it on myself, I'll glow green, so essentially I've got protect on. If I don't, like... If I look at this, it just says defense up. It's the same exact thing as protect. It's just very cheap for knights that are able to do it. Um, but I need to get to the person I'm trying to talk about as far as float is concerned, so... Okay, if I put flight on this dragon here... Okay, it just shows... It shows the dragon with a little symbol here, with a little Nike symbol. Or, not a Nike symbol, a Mercury symbol or a wing symbol. Whatever that you want to call that. Um, and it says terrain sky right there. It says condition terrain sky, as you can see. But he's not floating. In the original game, if you put float on a monster, they'll begin to hover up and down and they'll float. Could developers, could you please make the um, monster bob up and down when they're floating? I would love to see that as a visual. It would just help me out so much because then I don't have to look for these tiny little icons because I'm looking like really, really close at it. And I'm, it's a tiny little green icon I can see on the monster, but I gotta actually, like if I don't hover over it, if I don't hover over it, it's like, what is that? Is that a protect? Is that a, a ward? What, what is that? If they just floated, it'd be simple. You know, that's why I'm also saying as far as the color is going, like uh, protect should glow green, ward should go blue, halo should glow yellow, everything should glow a different color and have a little different icon. So maybe the ward would be a little blue man with arrows pointing up icon. Just saying, I think that'd be a good patch upgrade. Uh, let me know developers and uh, other fans out there what you think about this. I'm going to move on to my another point. Uh, number six, mermaid should heal in the water. I'll be right back and show you something. Okay, all right, so what I was gonna say here is uh, number number six, uh, mermaid should heal in the water. Now, in this game, I am completely baffled as to why sirens and mermaids do not heal in the water. It, to me, doesn't make any sense. They're ridiculously squishy. From the offset, they can die in two to three hits most of the time, even as a high-level siren. There's not much defense here. Yes, you can put gear on it, but there are so many monsters and so many knights in the game and trying to go for gear all the time is you, you can't almost get any seriously good gear until your end game. And by that point, you probably have like a ton of dead sirens. Um, the reason I'm saying this is because there is no heal for this. And for the upgrade, the mermaids cost 25 to start, the same as they do in the original game. But to upgrade a siren is 30 points. For what? A Mela Storm and, uh, you know, for a Mela Storm and a Frost Spell? To me, it's not that, it's it's not worth it. It, it might as well just be a 10 point upgrade if they're not going to heal because they're just so ridiculously squishy. They, they play the support role better because it's kind of, things are kind of flipped on their head in the past. Pixies of Protect was the thing. Now it's Mermaids with the Resist because of some random magic spells. Uh, the reason I'm saying this is because um, if someone casts weakness on your knight, it's 100% guaranteed, and these things can actually break that. Um, in the past, weakness was a percentage of your intelligence, and so therefore weakness wasn't cast all that much. Um, but the fact is they have no they have no kind of heal at all. In the past, if we check on the, uh, the merman here, it says aquatic heal of 5%. Now, if you go upgrading to a Triton and then to a Poseidon, I think the aquatic heal goes up to 15. It goes up quite high. So hit point recovery on sea, river, lake, and swamp. The only thing is, what I found out the hard way is that you cannot do its special whirlpool attack in a swamp. You can't do it in a swamp. The same thing goes for this one, too, as far as the new game is concerned. You can't, you can't really... Uh, you, you can't do it in a you can't do it in a swamp so it says uh, within two hex radius when caster is in water it never misses now I, I don't believe this is accurate I mean 
maybe they changed something, but in the past, I, at least I remember, I was in a swamp and I wasn't able to do a mail and storm. Uh, so I think swamp is kind of out of the question, but typically the old game would let you heal in the water. For a siren upgrade of 30 points, the siren is able to heal in the water. Even if you didn't want the mermaids to heal in the water, the sirens should be able to heal in the water because they are just so squishy. Defense of 100. Uh, if we come over here and we look at um, this defense of 105, this one actually has more defense than the new game and has a water heal and is a little more survivable. It's not the strongest monster. It's one of those flankers or tiny tanks as I would preferably try to call them but um yeah they've got the mp for the the mela storm once they turn into a triton but as far as this game goes it goes from siren or it goes from mermaid to siren the original game went from mermaid or merman to triton and then up into poseidon but why is there 30 points to jump up to a siren with just a frost and a melee storm they're ridiculously squishy they might as well have healing in a water now developers producers of the game please let the mermaids let the sirens heal in the water whether you want to let the sirens heal in the water or the whole class heal in the water i would prefer the whole class heal in the water because that's what we're kind of used to as fans of the original game we're used to these guys healing in the water and otherwise most people don't actually hire a siren or a mermaid i usually run with one of them uh just for some you know debuffs and all that but I got to be very careful because they can get killed very easily. So I would prefer to see that because I don't ever... Here's, here's the reason. I never put her out. I never put my Siren out in a position to do Mela Storm. I never do. Because it gets surrounded, two hits, it's dead. By the time I put it out there to do something, they'll kill it. <laughs> What's the point of putting it in the water? What's the point of using it offensively if it can't survive? Uh, I'm just saying, it doesn't have very high agility. Neither of them did. They never really did. Only in the water they have a little higher agility. But if, let's say, and, and you know for a fact, most of the characters in this game have very high agility. And some characters are almost impossible to hit. Talking about Della, talking about Toby, talking about, you know, list can go on. But um, what I'm saying is mermaids in this game should be able to heal in the water. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. All right, moving on. Uh, next up, rulers of country should have their own unique weapons. Quest unique, possibly. Let me get to that real fast. Okay. Number seven. Number seven on my list. Rulers of countries should have their own unique weapon or quest weapon or quest unique weapon now if we try to compare this here we look at uh we we look at our ruler here of neomechia he has two twin swords only specifically unique to just him we look at rubino here he gets the same swords that everybody else does right so you're it's it's not really unique it's not special he's just like one of the guys you know, one of the team, one of the whatever. Uh, <laughs> he's just, he's just one of those. But if we look at like stuff like this with with Vinard and all that, uh, he has a halberd. It's only unique to him. Only he can have that weapon. That makes him unique as a ruler, uh, as far as uh, that is concerned. And I liked it. That was one of the that was one of the drawing factors towards the game. I was watching him hit with the halberd and swing it around. That's why I liked it so much. Uh, initially now with the rulers just having the same exact sword as everybody else which they don't like she has a rapier um, uh, what was it Rubino also I believe he has a rapier and Epe or something like that they both have the same kind of weapon but they're unique they're not the same kind of sword you can typically get if we go up to her she's got a spear obviously there are other spears but um, I'd like to see her have something unique you know uh, Leonia Leoness had an orb, you know, as far as like Lilith Faith orb attack, you know, it was very unique to her. Nobody else had that weapon in the entire game. Uh, if we go over to Tim here, he's like the ninja. He's the first ninja ruler 
of the game and uh, he's got two little twin dagger things um, which a lot like a lot of the dancer class ninja stuff can have but it's very unique um, in a kind of a way it's you know and um, if I'm gonna look at this here too we look at Drist and we look at Ruto right now Drist has a scythe nobody else in the game has a scythe this was awesome <laughs> this was absolutely awesome this is pretty cool too but the fact is this sword the height of this sword if we had to compare it this is a claymore sword this is a gigantic sword this isn't the same kind of sword you can get and give it to him and someone else this is a this is almost the size of him this is the size of a man the scythe was unique to a scalio and only drist could wield that this claymore seems to be only unique to manislesia and only he can wield that rudo should have his own specialized swords to use okay that's what i'm saying like some leaders should have perfectly unique weapons to have and if not maybe be able to quest for them you know if we're going to go over to stella what does she have she has a cutlass she doesn't have a normal sword she has sort of a piratey cutlass sword this is uh you know the design here it, it sort of has that hilt but you know it, it comes back and it curves um it's it's a very unique uh kind of weapon that typically most of the you know rulers don't have and we look at Zemeckis here oops I kind of did something oh that moves very fast okay uh, we look at Zemeckis here what does he have he has a crossbow almost the size of him it's a man sized crossbow it's a very unique weapon just unique to him uh, if, if we go and we look at If we look at Kai, Kai has a book. Nobody else has a book. <laughs> what I'm saying here is that every every uh, leader should have their own unique weapon that is unique to them. If their weapon is very, very different, like this cutlass here, or like Rudo's, you know, two-heighted sword, um, even these, these swords that are rapiers instead of like regular one-handed swords, uh, I, I would suggest giving them all a unique weapon to quest for uh, that only they can have so that they kind of stand out a little bit because the original game, all of the rulers stood out because nobody else could have the weapons that they had. Nobody else could have them. It was just theirs. So that's my proposal to you developers and uh, producers of the game. I also want to thank you very much for the new game. I really do enjoy it. I'm just trying to help implement some really cool things that fans have wanted for a long time, myself included. I'm going to move on to number eight here real quick. Let me get to that. Okay. Number eight. Can we please change magic pool to rune pool or rune power like it was here in the original game? Rune power just made the most sense and uh, magic pool to me does not because it means almost the same thing as MP uh, magic points magic pool that can kind of seem a little confusing so developers uh, producer of the game could you please change the wording of this to rune pool maybe even mana pool I I don't mind that but everybody wanted the uh, rune pool i've talked to plenty of people and uh they wanted this to be changed to rune pool i do as well i i don't want to see magic pool there because it doesn't make a lot of sense comparing it to the fact that we already have mp points um rune power rune pool as to us english uh speaking people this this would help us out tremendously if this was changed in the next patch please Please, I hope that you listen to some of this here. Um, but that's that is number that is number eight, and number nine is growth and growth rate fix. So this growth rate here and this growth, this confuses me even to this day. I f keep forgetting which one is which. I I'm 
I just do. I just do. Can you change the wording on this to to be something else? This is uh, this can confuse many a player and a lot of new players. So if you want to help the game grow a little bit too, this particular thing right here. I know that the the original Grand Edition doesn't actually show these stats, but I know certain knights are really good because I played it for about 20 years. Um, but as far as the new game goes, like with this growth rate and all that, most players don't know which one is which. They they confuse growth rate with growth. So is it which one do I you know really want and what's working for that? If you could just help change the English terminology for this to help to help have this instead of a tip instead of looking at a tip just change this right here to make this more specific so that uh new players myself and other people that look at this we don't get confused all the time obviously the bottom number here with the a is the best and most important part as far as growth goes because i i think that's um how much magic pool you're going to get but sometimes I forget, and new players will definitely forget, and they'll be very confused with this terminology. Growth and growth rate, what does that even mean? Um, could you just change the terminology and change the wording of that to something else? That would be fantastic. So that was just my number nine bullet point here. Number 10, man of miracle description. So this is a big one uh, for me. I don't know how many people are going to say this is a big one for them, but... Um, when I look at a Man of Miracle here, and I look at the profile here, um, oh wait, that's not the Man of Miracle. Okay, this one's the Man of Miracle there. If I look at the Man of Miracle profile here, it says um, on the bottom it shows in blue, this is where you're gonna find the description for it here. And it, uh, it says, has a chance of transforming it to a Man of Miracle form immediately after being summoned. It already is a Man of Miracle. Um, it should read has transformed the reason I'm saying this is because for an English speaking uh, crowd they're like well this is how you, you get it but it's already a man of miracle so has transformed into a man of miracle form immediately after being summoned and then it gives a description here. It, I think the English side should be like changed to this because it would help a new player understand what's going on because if you just read it the way it's written it, from an English perspective, it sounds confusing. Like, but is it going to become a... Because that was one of the things initially when I saw it. I was, I was like, is this going to become a Man of Miracle? Do I have to do something about this? Because there's, there's this little symbol there and there's a lot of American and English players are going to be like, but the terminology, you know, it says it's going to, it should say that it is, it has already transformed into a Man of Miracles. That's, that was just a key point. I don't need to drone on about that. That was just <laughs> something I figured I'd point out. But next up, number, number 11, environment should have sound effects while moving through water, splash sounds, uh, forest, Leaves, crumplings of leaves, mountains, gravel moving, and stuff like that. You know, and as a side note, if Stella would change to like beach attire, bikini, whatever, uh, while she moved through the water, that'd be really cool. Or if she got a little boat that lifted her up and like put her to a new area while she was going through the water, because you know, she's the pirate, she's the pirate queen, put her on a boat, you know, make her swim through the water, you know, like a, a I don't know, that'd be kind of fun. But um, just to kind of like point that out here, if uh, let's say we move, we move, I don't know if I can move into the water right now, but and I've got all these flyers too, which doesn't help very much, does it? Yeah, there's no, there's no sound effect for moving through water, so let me, um... There's, there's no sound effect for moving through water. If I'm moving through water, could you change it from their feet to splashing sounds? If I'm moving through trees, can you have it make some kind of, like, tree sound? Like leaves 
you know, going, you know, something like crunching on leaves or something like that. And if you're moving over rock or mountains, could you make the gravelly sound? Uh, I'm just asking, like, from an aesthetic point of view, this would be awesome to implement into there uh, because when you're going through water, you should hear a splash or something like that. But also if you did, you know, make Stella have, like, you know, some kind of swim attire or get on a boat and take, like, a little boat through the water, to get to her next place that would be awesome because i use stella a lot i use morelv a lot it's one of my favorite countries actually and there's a lot of terrain that i cover through the water there's there's really cool um really cool maps that you've made that i can put her through the water and then sneak attack the the attack the castle from behind whereas most of the other knights can't do that unless they're vikings i think that's a really cool idea but you know just from an aesthetic point of view, could you at least, you know, consider uh, looking into some sound effects for, like, movement? You know, because when, when I'm moving my knight across water and I hear, don't, 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 it's like, well, where's the splashing sound? I'm on an ocean. I'm on a lake. I'm on a river. I'm in a swamp. And I'm hearing a, you know, sound like that. It just, it doesn't, uh, I don't know. I think that would be, like, a really cool addition that you could put into the game. So... I'm going to go ahead and uh, cover my next note here. Um, Stella needs Dragon's Destruction as a non-pre-move. Otherwise, she's outclassed. Uh, let, me get to, let me get to that real fast. All right, Stella's Dragon Destruction move here. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because I played with pretty much all the characters. I haven't played with Tim too much, but from playing against him, he doesn't seem that overpowered or anything like that. A lot of people talk about Rudo being overpowered, and after I played Mana Celestia at Theocracy, I can understand why he's overpowered. Most of his other knights really don't stack up and compare. It's a lot like playing the Ascaris Empire from Grand Edition. So the reason I'm saying this is that Rudo is very powerful. He's kind of like a Zemeckis from the original game, but most of his other knights aren't all that great in comparison to the other knights from the rest of the nations. So the reason that Rudo's okay is because somebody has to fill the role that the other knights are lacking in, right? I know there's Kyle, and I know that there's Emma, and I know there's some interesting knights out there, but if you compare the growth rate and uh, the growth and all that stuff compared to the other knights from the other countries, Mana Celestia Theocracy is very, very much like Iskaris Empire, and it just doesn't stack up. So you got one overpowered guy, and everybody else kind of falls short a little bit, comparatively. So I can understand Rudo being as powerful as he is, and initially I was thinking Rudo needed uh, to be nerfed, but actually, it makes sense. It totally makes sense. Um, but what I have to say here with the Dragon's Destruction is that if I compare Stella to most of the other leaders there... She's not that good, and she just isn't. I, I like playing as her a lot. Maybe it's because she's not that good. Maybe because I have to put forth my skill, um, make sure she's in the water for the most part, but there's a lot of places that there isn't any water. You know, I know that um, from this file that I have, I, I may have given her some potions or whatever that changed some stats, so whatever, but, you know, she's got very high agility, she's got very high hit points, She's got pretty good defense. It's not bad, so she's kind of like frontliner tank, more like Iria from uh, Grand Edition or the original game, whatever. But as far as her attacks goes, this is pretty underwhelming compared to the other ones. Now, you might say Eliza's is, isn't is as high, but she can move and attack with, with some very power. The reason this needs a buff, and I know that this is this sounds like it's a lot already. You know, you're giving yourself attack and defense and lowering their attack and defense. This is a pre-move. So you have to wait there for someone to be there. Most of the time you're playing a game, everybody will try to avoid her. So you have to go up to somebody and they'll walk away. It's like, unless you have react all the time, you're not going to be able to do this as much as you want to. You might want to be, and, and that's a scary thing, you have to put yourself next to Rudo, wait a turn, have him do clean military rule, probably kill you outright, and then you might be able to do Dragon's Destruction. So you have to put on a, you have to put on a protect spell first before you're going to protect yourself again. It doesn't make a lot of sense. 
everybody else has an amazing uh, plethora of skills and you're like, well, she's got gravity and dimension and charm. Most of the enemy has unicorns everywhere. They have a cleanse. They almost always have a cleanse. I play hard mode almost religiously and to try to dimension somebody hardly ever works. Try to charm somebody, it could fall off or they could get cleansed. It's like she doesn't have any real utility compared to any of the other rulers. So I'm proposing developers and uh, I think other people might be on board as well as far as this idea goes uh, that I think this needs to not be a pre-move. So, so what I'm saying is this shouldn't be here as far as that goes because if Rudo can come out and clean military rule and we're looking at a Morelva team that's very much like a Scalio with not much healers at all on their crew. Um, besides like a Lorenzo, uh, we're, we're we're looking at a very, very difficult LP with this. And, and I've had some very difficult LPs. I've gotten lucky a lot, but I'm saying other people might not get as lucky as I get with her. Maybe the fact is I pump up her, her agility a little more than, than maybe need be, but uh, the fact is, like, her compared to the other rulers, if this was not a pre-move, I would say she's just about right. She's just about right with the other ones because I don't use gravity. There's no point in using gravity, typically. There's sometimes occasional points in using dimension, but most people have intelligence too high that doesn't really do much. Only can really dimension, like, a big monster sometimes. And... Uh, and that, that isn't really doing anything except for displacing them. That could put them in a bad place, too. It could screw me over. Um, and in Charm, may or may not even work. And the enemy already has too many unicorns all over the place to, to cleanse it up. So it's it's like I don't even get a chance to do really any of her, her utilities with it. So I'm really just relying upon Dragon's Destruction for the most part. Now, boil, boil, um, sorry, Blood Boiling Drink... I could use that on a defense at the start of a battle, but that lowers my agility, and it's unless I'm on a castle, I, there's no point for it. So really, the only thing I'm looking at as far as the skills that I actually use for her are Dragon's Destruction, the Ambush, and the Morelvan Ocean Cut. And occasionally here and there, I'll try to dimension a big monster, but that's, that's really all I can do with that. Um, the enemies never... Never give me a reason to use spell break. That that never even happens. I, I never find a really good option or point to doing gravity. Uh, charm is almost never really going to work anyways, especially with turn orders and, and monsters. I'm just saying, like, for her, Dragon's Destruction should be a not pre-move. It should be a regular move. She should be able to walk up to Rudo and do Dragon's Destruction on Rudo because Rudo can come up and clean military rule almost flat out kill her or Tim in one shot. I've seen him kill Rudo or Rubino in one shot. So to compare her to the other rulers, I think she has to have a non pre-move Dragon's Destruction. Developers and producers, I really like her a lot. I just think that there should be that little tweak there to help her out because I think comparing her to the other rulers, she doesn't really stack up that well. Um, but I do like her. She's my favorite ruler and I like to use her in battle is a lot but um, that was my point there I'm gonna move on to my 13th point I've got 17 points so I don't have very much further to go but um, invasion prompts I'll get to that real quick okay invasion prompts let me look over this real fast uh, so I'm gonna attack this castle I'm gonna let it go and uh, we'll see what it looks like, right? Okay, the invasion with the flags there, they're all gray. The invading flag should look like the colors that are coming in. You know, like we see here with the uh, the uh, with the uh, the orange for Morelva and the green for the Shinobi. That's how it should look like on the invasion prompt. And I know that's just like a little detail, but it would help me like see something really fast to be like, well, who's invading what? You know, it's all a bunch of gray flags. I, I think the innovation prompt should reflect the color of what's going to happen, okay? All right, so I'm going to move on to my next point here. The steeps in Holy Goose of a country should be walkable 
by mountain preferable knights and monsters. Let me get into that. Okay, so my next uh, my next point is uh, steep in a holy goose of a country should be walkable by mountain preferred knights and monsters. So the steep here that we can see on the map are these brown circles here. That's why I call this Teddy Bear Castle. But uh, you know these these are the steeps here where it shows those brown lines, and you you can only go up like if you're next to it. It forces you to stop for a turn, and then you got to walk up one turn at a time until you get past it. Uh, as far as mountain terrain monsters, they like to be on the mountains, and steep is close enough to being a mountain that I think they should be able to walk up these steeps. And this is the steep right here. This is the st the st uh, steep or steps. But a mountain creature like a bronze golem, a giant, a rogue. You know, anyone that has this symbol here prefers terrain mountain should be able to easily cross that without any problems. Because if we look at the, uh, like if I, if I, um, look at this here, here's mountains right here and there's steeps right up there, you should be able to get past all of that easily. That's my suggestion. That's what I think should be. I think other people may have stated this as well. Let me know what you think in the comments down below about that. I'd love to hear it. Uh, developers, let me know if you think that's appropriate because I feel it's appropriate for the mountain creatures to be able to easily bypass that because they can easily bypass other areas of the field because of their preference, right? Okay. Uh, right. So Holy Griffins should have an MP usable wing attack. Now, when I'm saying Holy Griffins, I mean the Simurg class, which I don't think I have a Simurg class here, but um, let me go ahead and show you that real quick. Okay, uh, let me go ahead here and uh, talk about this a little bit. The Holy Griffins or the Simurg, the new bird called Simurg, it's essentially the Holy Griffin just without a wing attack from Grand Edition here. If we're looking at the Grand Edition side. Now, I don't have one I can class up right now, but in the Grand Edition side, when you go to class up this monster, um, I can't show it because I'm in a class mode, but it will get a wing attack that it can throw wing needles at you, much like the uh, uh, the Angel could and all that. Um, <clears throat> and in this game, in Legend of Renarzia, we don't have anything except for Sonic Roar. It's essentially a rock with a Sonic Roar. It's, that's it. It doesn't have a free wing attack. What I am proposing, developers and uh, producers of the game, please install a wing attack for the Simurg, especially because otherwise utility, I always pick a Phoenix. There's barely any utility for these guys at all. There's almost no reason for me to buy one. They're powerful, they're strong, but a phoenix has more survivability and has a flame spell and has a heal and heals itself. It's like compare the Simurg to the phoenix and I absolutely just never pick the Simurg. I only pick it once in a while just because I'm like, oh, I never, I haven't, I don't have one of these guys. Let me make a Simurg for my collection. That's about it. That's the only reason I don't try to put these guys into battle because there's not much utility to them. Now, if they had a wing attack and let's say it used MP because you think they're too, it'd be too powerful to have a free wing attack. Okay. But if they had a wing attack and it used MP, and they have whatever MP they have, whatever the MP is for a wing attack, that would be fantastic to give to these guys because then I would actually probably pick them. Or if they had like an, uh, uh, an attack that drained MP from the enemy or just destroyed it, like uh, a Wyvern or something like that, I don't know. But I, I think it should be more along the lines of what it was in Grand Edition where you have a free wing attack but if you're if you think that's too powerful, just give them a, a a wing attack that costs MP. You know, much like the new goblins have the a, a bad and wave where they walk up and they do an eye slash from three range space. I would prefer to see these guys actually have a wing attack, whether it's free or it costs MP. I don't care one way or another. I would just like to see them have some other utility because dominating mountains 
har I'm hardly ever on the mountains <laughs> to to defend or fight. It's only sometimes here and there. In the Sonic Roar, I don't even I don't I don't do it because I don't want to hit my own team most of the time. And most of the time, everybody's so packed in together that I'd be hurting my own team. So I don't use these guys. I don't use these Simurgs hardly at all. Um, just the Phoenixes, because Phoenixes have more utility, more things going on for them. So that's my suggestion for you, developers. I hope you, you know, uh, can agree to that, but let me know. And uh, viewers, let me know in the comments down below, too. Uh, next one should be, and Dorian should be random teleport on hard. There's a 50 turn time limit. I think it should be random on hard so that it's at, the battle's actually a little bit harder. Let me, um, Okay, the second to last part I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to finish this off soon here, but what I wanted to talk about was uh, Endorian should have a random teleport on hard mode. Now this game, uh, particularly for me, is set to <clears throat> is set to hard mode. So if I look at... Um, well, I don't know if I can show you here, but this, this game in particular set hard mode. When I was beating it with Rudo and uh, his fantastic team of uh, movable pixies. But um, essentially here, what we're looking at, and you can look on the right side of the screen here too, for the Grand Edition side. You can see I have it set to a battle with Zemeckis versus the uh, Destroyer. And uh, here we got Endorian um, here. But whether Endorian's on your team or not, now this is spoilers here uh, for all those that are coming up to play the game. I just want to let you know, if you don't want to know about this particular fight because you haven't gotten to it yet, please tune out now and tune in near the end of the video. This is only going to take me like a couple minutes to talk about. Um, and uh, please like and share and subscribe for more on YouTube as well. But what I want to say is that if we look at the normal game, just just remember what's up on the right there as far as that goes. It's turn one for Grand Edition, you know, against the uh, the boss and all that. Um, you have 12 turns. You have 12 turns to complete this battle here in order to do it. Um, this was kind of hard back in the day. Um, you can do it, but it's, it's kind of hard. It's just... It, you know, it's it's just kind of hard to do. But you got 12 turns to complete it. Doesn't really show it here. But if you get to turn 12 and you don't do it, it'll kick you out the field, and you've got to come back and do it again. Now in the new game, you get <laughs> sorry, um, you get 50 turns here. So you get 50 turns to do it. You can't even get up to that high. I've I've tried to let my guys linger around for a while. You can't get to 50 turns. It's not. It's not going to happen. Um, I don't know why there's 50 turns, but there is. But the point that I wanted to say was that because there's all this time, right? You know, there's apparently 50 turns time worth. I mean, un unless, unless I did something like amazing and got a bunch of monsters, you know, maybe. But the point I wanted to make was that... Um, now, this is spoilers if you haven't played this before and you don't want to know. But... And Dorian should be able to randomly move. Typically, and Dorian's like from the offset, it's going to move to his left. Uh, typically, he's going to move to his left, and that's right about right here, where you see the uh, the glowing hex just disappears. That's where he's going to move, right to this space, and he's going to fill those fill those areas there. That's why you can't move into that space. Uh, the game won't let you. Uh, much like Yorg Mungander kind of stays put, and uh, the Rune God typically kind of stays put. He doesn't move anywhere. Um, and Dorian does move, but to preset places. So he'll move left, he'll move back to center, I believe, and then he'll move back to the right. Uh, if I said that wrong, you know, let me know. Uh, depends on which way I'm looking at it, and depends on which side of the fa you know force you're fighting for. Uh, but he'll move over here. To this space where it just where you see the cursor kind of disappear the uh the highlighted hex just disappears right there so he'll move there and then move back to center so he kind of does that over and over again now normal and easy it's you know pretty predictable but hard mode um it's still not super easy but it's fairly predictable so as soon as i start off with the battle i just immediately if i'm going to fight against Sindorian, i immediately go to my left 
to go and attack him and I'm already you know set up to attack him I can I can beat him pretty easily that way it's it's very predictable what I would suggest is uh, developers and producers please have Endorian I know he's gonna move either left or right have him have a random movement so if he moves all the way to the left you know and if you're looking at this from this perspective and it's a little too hard to see I'm just gonna go ahead and circle this is his normal start location then he moves over here and then he moves back to center and he kind of moves over here so maybe have it be like random like he might just move all the way to the right instead or you know he might move all the way to the left something like that something a little more random because if we're gonna put because if we're gonna compare it and I think a lot of people kind of compare this to the original game or the original grand edition because if we're going to look at uh I'm gonna get the right controller here if we're gonna look at Jormungandr Jormungandr doesn't move anywhere but the chaos things that spawn spawn in all different locations they're all over the place that's the reason why the snake of chaos battle or the Ouroboros or the Jormungandr depending upon which translation you're looking at it's very chaotic it's crazy and the Orgma Gondor battle, you could lose in, even with a good team, just randomly, because it's random chaos. And that's the reason why it's actually a lot of fun. Um, so my suggestion is that you have Endorian move around, because if you play the Bullnoil fight, Bullnoil will go anywhere. He can teleport anywhere, and uh, you, know, you don't know what he's going to do. You have to try to put together a really solid defense that's the reason why a lot of people like that fight and it was very enjoyable is because it was more chaotic it was more difficult you didn't really know what was going to happen some people weren't into an end boss fight and some people tell me that but personally for me i like to have something to do with these high class knights that i built up and then there's nothing left to do with them so you know I, I like having a end tier boss fight i i truly do like this so i really like the endorian fight and i really like the uh rune god fight i'm just saying to to make it more enjoyable as far as like a strategic standpoint on hard please make endorian at least teleport randomly to different locations instead of just being very pre destined to what he's going to do because that would make it more enjoyable because as soon as he's getting up and moving up he could be way over there and you'd be like no <laughs> you know i gotta move all my stuff over there now that might make it a little a little more difficult and i think fans would enjoy that part of it a little bit more um so that's what i had to say about that uh moving on i'm going to move on to shield block equipment so let me pause the video and get right to that and we'll talk about that Okay, so I kind of want to go ahead here and uh, talk about the shield block a little bit. And so what I want to basically say for the shield block is in the um, the Grand Edition game up here, we have lizard guards that can have shield block. And uh, I'll show you Lizard King right here real quick. And you get to see that and see what that's about. So if we press triangle again we we can see that it has a shield block and the shield block is pretty good because lizard king but uh on blocks sturdy shield reduces damage by 50 percent 50 percent damage reduction with that okay so that's pretty that's pretty good so i'm going to go back over here and show you with the new game uh so if i'm going to go ahead and equip this uh quaddle here with an azure scale manifester it says passive shield block rate of 10 percent now, this typically for the new game only applies to knights and um, royal guards and lancers and that sort of thing, and lizard guards and stuff that have a natural shield block percentage. This passive skill is supposed to buff that. But what I would like to see for this new game is everybody can get it if, it, you, know, if you can equip this particular piece of gear. Now, let me know in the comments down below if you agree with that or not. Um, as far as that is concerned, I think that would be um, a pretty cool addition to the game that every monster could get shield block, like a Quaddle could shield block <laughs> with this kind of uh, defensive piece of gear. I think it would make some monsters a little more survivable, but um, yeah, that was that was one of the um, that's one of my recommendations. I think that would be really cool to see. Um, and there's also some other things that. Um, there, there's some terminology that I've seen in here um, 
and and I can't find it. It just this is a last minute thing. I'm just coming off the top of my head. I'm trying to think of something, but uh, uh, there's some terminology that says inflicts inflict something else. Uh, so there's some wording terminology as far as like inflicting skills or uh, damage on other people and I, I can't find it right now but I just remembered that that there's some English terminology that I think needs to be fixed as far as uh, when it says inflicts inflicting uh, stuff which hopefully that's just a little bit of a, a patch that could just you know kind of fix a couple things but yeah that's um that's pretty much all for now I think the only other thing that I, I kind of wish would come back a little bit would be the IS slashes for the swordsman class or the uh, samurai class, but the fact is, I mean, they've got extra critical damage, so I don't know if that would make them overpowered, but I don't know. Um, other than that, that pretty much uh, ends this whole video here. What, essentially what I had to talk about, you know, if I'm just going to do bullet points real fast, and you just came to the end just to watch the very bitter end, and you're like... What is this all about? Well, locations, locations, locations. The original one had a very simplistic way of showing locations. I want to know where I'm going, not where I came from. Uh, two, HP bar displays uh, disappears with Y press, but not the squad bubble. The squad bubble is very important to have on there, but I like to see the HP bar go away because I actually like to see the characters, you know, wiggling around it's it's kind of nice to see the the monsters and the knights there but with an HP bar in the way it's you, you kind of cuts off half of the uh, the visuals um so uh, inability to turn off the HP bar but leave the squad bubble I want to see the squad bubble I want to know if the monsters for a team for alpha team beta team or charlie team uh number four knights and creatures knights and creatures or monsters as I'm you know used to it should glow green blue or yellow based on spell colors so if it's a warding spell if it's a magic defense spell please have them glow blue have the icon as a blue icon if they're flying you know let them levitate a little bit and hover that's number five point there but um uh number six mermaids should heal in the water mermaids sirens should all heal in the water because Going from a, from a mermaid to a siren with a 30-point bump and a melee storm and a frost spell, that's quite expensive, and they're so squishy they die so fast, it's like I, I could fill that role with a hellhound or something like that um, and make better use out of it. So that's why I don't pick sirens too much, and I don't think that many people actually do uh, pick it. I know they're in the water and they can evade a little bit, but as soon as you get chained effect... With the chaining, chaining effect is even stronger now in this game versus the uh, Grand Edition. Um, it's so much easier to kill them off. Uh, number seven. Rulers of countries should have their own unique weapon or quest weapons that are unique just to them. I think that would be awesome if they had their own weapons. Like Rudo should have his own Claymore sword that's as tall as him. Nobody else should be able to have that. Just saying. Stella with her cutlass. Tim with his you know, dual dagger stuff, and I'm just saying, every ruler should have their own unique weapon like it was in Grand Edition, LWF. That's the reason why a lot of people fell in love with the initial game, because if you're playing as Drist, you got a huge honk and scythe, you know, you can use in the battlefield. That's really cool. Nobody else had that. Okay, number eight, change magic pool to rune pool. Very important. Um, this gets very confusing because for an English uh, speaker, uh, pronouncer, producer, uh, or, you know, I, I make a lot of videos for YouTube for Burgundine specifically, Magic Pool and MP sound very much the same, and it gets confusing. Uh, and a lot of people have stated this. Uh, please change the verbiage to Rune Pool because we were used to Rune Pool in the past. If you want to do Mana Pool, okay, but Rune Pool would be the most appropriate. Um... Number nine, growth and growth rate fix. That terminology there for growth and growth rate, please fix that and change one of them to say something different because it's very confusing to an English-speaking player to try to describe this to other people. It's extremely confusing. Uh, number 10, mana miracle description. In the um, what's written as far as the description goes, it the description on the monster itself should say, this is a mana miracle monster. Number 11, environment should have sound effects while moving through water, splashing sounds in water, 
forest sounds like leaves crunching and uh, mountain sounds like gravel crumbling under your feet when you move. Um, number 12. Stella needs Dragon's Destruction as a non-pre-move, otherwise she's outclassed. I've seen Tim in his final class. He is insanely powerful. Eliza is insanely powerful. Rubino is insanely powerful. Rudo is insanely powerful. Uh, Talia's got a bunch of MP to keep herself alive. She's more like a healer like Leoness. What does Stella have? A, a charm spell that doesn't even work half the time or the enemy has unicorn she doesn't have anything that amazing honestly comparatively her dragon's destruction should be a a, a non pre-move which meaning that she should be able to walk up and do dragon's destruction to somebody else just like rudo walks up and does clean military rule i think that would be very important that would really make stella kind of a player compared to the other ones otherwise she is so outclassed um that's what I think about it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Everybody else is watching too. Uh, invasion prompt should have country specific flags. So when it says invasion and you just see all the gray flags, there should be like green and yellow flags in there. If it's those color, you know, those colors fighting each other, or it should be like red and blue. If those colors are fighting each other, something like that. I think it would help me know who is invading what, because it just shows invasion. I'm like, who's invading who? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, number 14, the steeps on the Holy Gustafa country should be um, walkable by mountain pref preference units. So if they prefer mountain, they should be able to walk on it without being stalled. I think that would make sense. I mean, that's, that's what I think would make sense. Number 15, the Holy Griffins should have an MP usable wing attack uh, or the Simurg class that's in here. The Simurgs or should be just like the Holy Griffins and use a wing attack to hit the uh, enemy, whether you want to install uh, uh, the wing attack, be MP, you know, you have to burn MP to use it, or it's free. It doesn't matter to me. I just want to see the Griffins be, or the, the Simurgs be able to do the wing attack again, because otherwise I never use those things. Um, number 16, and Dorian should be random teleport on hard mode. So, and Dorian should teleport to his other two spaces randomly on hard mode. I think that would be really fun. And number 17, shield block equipment should allow all knights and monsters to shield block. I think that would be awesome because then you could have a hellhound with shield block and, you know, because he's got like a gauntlet, you could block with his gauntlet and, like, you know, rawr, 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 you know, but <laughs> I think that would be fun uh, to have that, but. Um, either that or change the terminology for it. So there's some English terminology changes and some improvements and uh, a personal thing with uh, Stella because I played with most of the knights and I've seen most of the knights, I've fought against them. And I'm just saying Stella is really under, she's, she's really like nerfed compared to the other ones. Because if I put Stella up to Rudo to stop there, to wait a turn to do Dragon's Destruction, guess what Rudo's gonna do? Clean military rule done i mean she just can't <laughs> she, she can't really compare in that sense if she could walk up to him do dragon's destruction and then he does clean military rule but they both kind of get away with it or he's kind of weakened but she's got hurt you know it might make some sense but um yeah that's all i've got for that i hope uh that helped out and uh let me know what you think in the comments down below I'm going to go ahead and uh, call this video. I know this is kind of a longer one, but uh, I'd love to know what the fans think. I'd love to know what the developers and the producers of the new game think. I'm really trying to propose something that I think would be very helpful for the American base, the English base here, to appreciate the game more, is to uh, make the game a little bit easier on the eyes and uh, a couple upgrades, fixes, things that... Uh, hardcore fans have loved about the grand edition the original game that they want back in this version so if you could do a patch update for it if it could be in the patch update of 1.1.6 that would be fantastic thank you so much for watching i please consider some of this if not all of this and uh, i'll see you in the next lp that i do or helpful video helpful brigandine guide that i'll put out and uh, other than that i'll see you later